Uh, hi, I'm Melina Chan. I'm here at the 27th Canadian Science Policy Conference. I have here with me Michael Lewis from uh, CEMEX Alliance, where he's the Vice President of R&D. Uh, Michael, glad to have you here. Can you tell us about your work at CEMEX Alliance and why it's important and unique? Yes, well, we're uh, an alliance of uh, farmers co-ops. So we uh, have the responsibility of trying to bring the breath, best genetics uh, from around the world uh, to our, our producers. And uh, to do that, we have to stay up uh, to date on all the, the newest technology. Uh, some of the things that we've done in the past are things like genomic selection, where we've been able to use markers from across the genome to make faster selection. Uh, based on uh, an animal's genotype rather than having to wait for how they've actually produced uh, in the field. And so uh, that technology alone has uh, increased the rate of genetic progress by 50% uh, in a very short period of time. That's really cool. So what do you envision will happen in the next 50 years of animal breeding and genomics? And will Canada play a leadership role globally? Well, the next 50 years will be very challenging because we have a lot more people on the planet, a lot more mouths to feed, uh, and we only have a set amount of land, a set amount of water, uh, and uh, some of those resources are under stress. So we have to do a much better job of getting more, in our case, more dairy products uh, uh, per, uh, per unit of resources, per unit of land, and so on. So we're going to have to be much more efficient than we are today. That doesn't mean that cows will need to produce a lot more milk. We just need to produce a lot more milk with a lot fewer inputs. So better feed efficiency, uh, fewer environmental impacts. So we need to use less land. Every time we uh, have to produce more and we need more land, it means we're going to be cutting down more trees. So we, we certainly uh, have to learn how to produce more with less. Uh, so do you think Canada will play a leadership role? In well, I, the I world? think Canada already is playing a oh, leadership role. Uh, we, we do have a lot of technologies that have been originated here. Uh, one uh, notable one is uh, something called Immunity Plus. Immunity Plus uh, enables us to measure the uh, immunocompetence or how healthy a cow naturally is, how able a cow is to fight off disease naturally. Uh, and, and that means that uh, a farmer is going to have to use, or needs to use less antibiotics. Uh, the animals are going to be healthier and happier, and that means they're going to produce more. Uh, so that's an example of how Canada can lead. Um, in the future, we can see that um, technology like sensors, uh, robotics, uh, are going to play an increasingly uh, larger role. And it'll be uh, a challenge uh, how to use all of that information, uh, whether it's how much a cow eats, uh, is a cow healthy, is a cow walking right, is it uh, ruminating correctly. All of these things can be measured now. And, uh, and we'll be able to use that information uh, to be more efficient in the future. That's really neat. I didn't know any of that. <laughs> uh, so my next question is, how do you see uh, animal engineering and conventional breeding intersecting, and do they crosstalk right now? Well, there's, there's not a lot of crosstalk right now. Uh, genetic engineering uh, has been more focused on plants because plants are, are one step further remu removed from the consumer. Mm -hmm. And as you know, there's, there's a lot of uh, um, uncertainty around the use of genetic engineering. There, there are some examples in animal breeding. Uh, right now, the crosstalk is minimal. Um, I think the animal breeding area would, would view this as a risky area because we're not sure yet, uh, A, what the policy will be, uh, and B, what will be consumer reactions, uh, what will be the reactions of uh, processors. So all of these unknowns make it very difficult. But that's one of the reasons why I'm here is to yeah. better understand, uh, you know, how, uh, how do new, these new technologies fit into our future? Do they fit? Uh, and how, how can we, we do this in a way that is responsible to society and our consumers. Mm -hmm. So leading into that, what do you think is the value of the Canadian Science Policy Conference? Well, this is the first time I've attended uh, the Canadian Science Policy meeting and uh, I was just sitting in uh, uh, Science Policy 101. Uh, it was interesting to note that um, there is very different ways of operating and looking at the world between the scientists and the policymaker, and uh, there is not as much crosstalk as there should be. 
to us in industry, science policy <clears throat> is somewhat of a, an opaque box. We, we don't really understand who's making the decisions and how policy is set. Uh, but what, we've, what I'm learning here today is that we need a lot more crosstalk between policymakers and scientists and, and industry. And uh, I think that comes down to relationships. Uh, making them here is, uh, I think, uh, one of, one of the, my top priorities today. Thank you so much for having this conversation. Uh, before we leave, can you tell me what's final more about your work online? Uh, you can find out more about our uh, company, uh, www.cmex.com. Uh, CMEX is S-E-M-E-X, and uh, you can learn about cattle breeding and uh, what we do. Great. Thank you so much, Michael. Thank you.